toxic people, something that we're all very much exposed to, especially now when we have social media. The envy is just cannot be even hidden anymore. People tend to just project their insecurities onto us. Now, unfortunately, the issue with this is that most toxicity comes from the people that are around us, from some friends and acquaintances and potential relationships. So what skills do we need to really spot out the toxic person around us or who's trying to get into our circle? Because what happens most times is that we get emotionally involved with these people, they dig their claws deep into our emotions, into our circles, and then we realize that they're a little bit toxic and it's a little too late and we now need healing. We need ways to get away from this toxic person and we need some healing. But what if we had the skill set to spot out the toxicity way before they even get close to us? If you haven't been to my page, welcome. I'm Hamasa. I look at personal development, mental and emotional well-being, and just day-to-day -day issues. Please do subscribe so that you're up to date with all my content. Toxic people tend to have tend to be master manipulators because from a young age they are socialized to learn how to win love because they toxic people or people who have traits of narcissism or have narcissistic personality disorder it all comes from the way they've been socialized in childhood and if love was given to them in dips and drips and drabs and they had to work really hard and they had to pull up, put on a whole charade to win the love over from their primary caregiver a parent or a sibling then they've learned from a very very young age how to manipulate the situation and make people like them they're very likable and they're very charming so the first thing that you need to look out for is if someone that you've just met is being excessively nice to you. There's nothing wrong with being nice, there's nothing wrong with being friendly, and you should always be open and receptive to meeting new people. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you feel on edge, you feel uneasy, and this niceness is unnatural. It's just not possible for someone to be this nice to you when they've just met you. They're doing things that a good old friend of yours would do for you or saying things. So it just puts you a little bit on edge because they're just so amazing to you, about you. They just run around you, put you on a pedestal, and it's making you feel a little bit uneasy. That is not normal. Most healthy people who meet a new person, not only they're nice, but they're also quite reserved. Maybe not reserved, but cautious and quite natural in their behavior because they are too judging you the same way that you're judging them so two healthy people meeting are both very nice and polite to each other but at the same time taking each minute and each moment as it comes and not getting carried away or running away with it because they're sussing you out you're sussing them out and you kind of have to earn that trust and earn that respect and vice versa then the friendship naturally grows organically and goes in the right direction but if someone is very nice so they're like miles ahead of you and you are just getting to like know a little bit about them and you feel like oh my god why is this person being so extra most likely is a narcissistic person or a toxic person throwing dust in your eyes to cloud your vision to who they truly are so if someone's being excessively nice and it puts you on edge and makes you feel cautious is for a reason pay attention to that nobody that's healthy and doesn't have ulterior motives is that nice or very extra the first time you guys meet so most likely they're trying to dig their claws into you they're trying to look for their next, next narcissistic supply they're quite toxic they want to be it's like keep your friends close but enemies closer so they may want to be just very close to you but not for the right reasons so if you feel on edge you feel a bit awkward and they're being extra nice and it's making you feel uncomfortable don't feel guilty or feel bad that there's something wrong with you if it's unnatural your energy will pick it up things that your logical mind doesn't make sense of your energetic field will pick up the unnatural energy being sent towards you the next thing to watch out for is if someone is always the victim now you meet them or you're hanging out with them and they this person all they talk about is how they've been dealt a bad hand. All their exes are crazy. They've done such horrible things to this person. 
their parents are crazy, they've grown up in a toxic household. Basically, there is no accountability in the part that this person plays in their own downfall over and over again. The way they look at a situation is that they've always been the victim and bad things always happens to them. And it's not their fault, they're very nice, they're very loving, but people take advantage of that and people abuse it and therefore they get walked all over and they get hurt and they get stabbed in the back. Now, let me tell you, unfortunately, there are some people who get a lot of bad luck and bad things do happen. But when it's genuine, these people also take accountability and responsibility of the things that they do wrong in this to be going down, in things not working out. It's like, yeah, fine, this person was bad for me, but I also should have like paid attention, watched out, been more smart about it. There is some sort of accountability, some sort of understanding that they all they too no one puts a gun to your head and makes you do anything you also were you know you were naive enough to get manipulated this is your weakness like there is some sort of understanding that you too had a part to play but there is like even if it's like if my ex was crazy my ex was crazy well either they were crazy and you got with them in the first place so that's on you or you made them crazy so that's also on you so like Take some accountability. If you're entertaining and humoring a crazy person, then you're just as wrong. Like, you can remove yourself from a situation if your ex is crazy. Understand, see what's going on and have some self-respect. This is what I mean. There aren't, like, you can't constantly make excuses for things that go wrong. You can't constantly put the blame on other people. You can't constantly point the finger at others and you are the victim. If someone is doing this around you, be it a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a friend, a teacher, um, your mother, your father, anyone, your neighbor, then they are the issue here. What's the common denominator in every situation that went down? What's the common denominator in all these people that this person has encountered? Them. They are the common denominator and they are the ones who are experiencing all these mishaps. Then they're doing something wrong here. Victim mentality is never cute and it's usually something that people specifically with covert narcissism have. People who are covert narcissists, which are come across very nice, polite, gentle, they're not your typical grandiose, look at me, I'm amazing narcissist. They are more the victim mindset narcissist or toxic people. And so if someone's constantly the victim and has been dealt a bad hand, then that's probably they had a big part to play in it and they just cannot take accountability. That is a red flag because they will do the same thing to you. No matter how much wrong they do, no matter how much they respect you, disrespect you, sorry, they will not take accountability for it and they will blame you for it. It's like, you made me disrespect you. You made me cheat you. This is the kind of person this, this indiv certain individual is. The person that always plays the victim, watch out for them. Thirdly, is patterns of behavior. Now, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody, when you get to know someone, they fir you first meet them, you have to test each other out. People's different upbringings, childhoods, socialization, nurturing will affect how they are as people. So it's important for us to know that this person is not exactly going to do and say all the right things that I want them to. They're not exactly going to do all the things that I expect them to. This will take time. They will get to know me. I'll get to know them. Da, da, da. However, if you spot patterns of behavior that happen repeatedly four or five times, then that's where you have a problem. Because this person is knowingly, maliciously choosing to do the things that you've asked them to stop not, or not to do. So let's say you're dating someone and they're quite toxic. You ask them, please don't cut me off. Please don't delete and block me. Don't ignore me because if we fight, we need to communicate. It's very important that we communicate. It's one of my triggers. We need to keep the communication lines open. Like, do not go into this ghosting mode. It's not healthy. You say that to them the first time you guys fight and they're like, oh yeah, sorry, like I've just dealt with things in a way that I had to like, you know, I've just, I shut down. I don't know how to deal with things, so I shut down. Okay, cool, but you know, please understand that it doesn't work for me and the relationship won't work if you choose not to communicate. Then they do it again, then they do it again, then they do it again and you repeatedly asking them nicely, explaining to them how lack of communication isn't going to resolve anything. Now that 
to you is a pattern of behavior. They do it four or five times. They're repeatedly showing you that they're choosing to disrespect your word and your feelings. And therefore, they will do exactly what they want to do when they want to do it. And no matter what you say, they're not going to take your feelings into account. That is what lets you understand and realize that this person is toxic. Patterns of behavior is what differentiates healthy people from toxic people because healthy people they may make one or two mistakes the same mistake again but if they show remorse apology and try to rectify it and bear in mind that this upsets you then it's genuinely a lack of understanding lack of communication and it's a learning curve and therefore they're gonna learn and adjust but if they can if they blatantly like the minute you fight they block you because they know that's what winds you up and they keep doing that then that's a pattern of behavior and they're showing you their red flags. They're showing you their true colors and their toxicism. So pay attention to that. You have a choice here. So make that choice. Look out for yourself. Put yourself as number one. You already know how these patterns of behaviors will end up. So why would you willingly and choosingly go down this route and ignore the red flags? Our intuition is there. Our gut is there to protect us in nature. When an animal is being hunted, let's say a deer is being hunted by a lion and they're grazing, they suddenly look up and look around when they feel they're in danger because that's their, their intuition telling them that they're in danger. There's a risk around and they need to look out. So when we as humans also get an intuition, this is something that we're born with. This is a gift from nature and is there to protect us. It's our defense mechanism. So if you ever get a gut feeling about someone, you feel uneasy around them, those signs are for a reason. Like I said, your logical mind doesn't make sense of what's going on to that quickly within the first few seconds, minutes. But your gut, your feelings, your energy, which is what you're born with, which is what in the animal kingdom keeps them safe and protected, is there to help you differentiate between someone who's good for you or is healthy or someone who's toxic to you and will probably bring you down and break you. So trust those gut feelings. They're there for a reason. Don't dismiss them. Don't think you're crazy. All I'm saying is that every situation is subjective. Not every nice person is toxic. Not every victim is toxic. But watch out for patterns of behavior. See how you really feel around this person. And then trust your gut. Go with it. And, you know, at the same time, like these situations are subjective. It means that if you something that does make you feel uneasy and you do get a gut feeling, doesn't mean you cut this person off, doesn't mean you completely just ghost them. It just means be cautious, pay attention, look out for the patterns of behavior. And if you see it repeating, then the choice is yours and you can walk away, you can do something about it and you know better. I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe to my page, like and comment on this video, share it with someone who may need it and I'll see you guys here again very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.